well, if, I, if I'm able to work on climate, because it's, it's something, uh, I mean, where I live at the moment in, in the UAE, and we have COP28 coming in, in uh, November. And I think, again, and I don't want to make this into a theme of, of, of everything I say, but you know, the, the way that it is approached as a story as well, and as a host country, I think there's, a, there's, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, double standards, again, in the way that it's covered. And again, we're feeling this in, in our coverage of, of what's going on with, uh, with COP28. And a host country being looked at as if they are the cause of the problem is, is not fair by, by Western, Western media. The second thing is that it's not really the first country that, that uh, hosts uh, COP28 that is an oil producing country. Um, Scotland did it a couple of years ago and Egypt did it after that. And, and then, you know, the look, and, and this is going to actually relate back to, to refugees and the, and the situation in Africa. The, the 100 billion commitment that was made by the developed world for, uh, for the developing world in Africa and in Asia, that never came through, never came through. And then, uh, you know, even Prime Minister Modi is now saying that it's actually closer to a trillion the, the billion that these developing countries are going to require. So all of these things with, you know, rich countries develop their, the, their economies over many, many years with the resources that came maybe from these other countries like in, in Asia and in, in Africa. And, uh, and now this is, this is not coming through in terms, of, in terms of aid. And this is affecting all these poorer countries. And then when in, in Europe, when the crisis happens in, in uh, Ukraine, what happens the first thing? Fire up all the coal plants. You know, this is, this is what happened. And then going back to the same poor countries uh, that were supposed to uh, change the way that they operate in terms of developing their economies, going back and say, actually, now you have to um, export LNG for us on our terms because now we need it. And therefore, you're not going to be able to use it afterwards in terms of developing your own economies and your own, your own uh, structures after, after this crisis goes away. So that kind of double standard, you know, sometimes the, the moral high ground that is taken by uh, Western media in, in, in proposing what are the solutions is, I think it's unfair. A lot of us are looking at this and saying, what about the poor countries that were, that were promised all this aid and they never got it in terms of development? And, and then when you think about it, all this bad publicity and the second highest polluter in the world and the biggest oil producer in the world is the United States. You know, this, is, this is a fact. But in terms for a host country from the reason for all the problems is completely unfair. And lastly, I just want to close on this one. You know, the presidency as well of, of COP was under a lot of attack that this, you know, that this oil man is running the, the presidency of, of, uh, of COP. That's unfair as well because we're not looking at the track record of the, one of the largest renewable energy companies in the world, Musta, which he resides over. He actually started it many years ago projects in 40 countries around the world, rich and poor. When you fly into the um, uh, Thames Estuary, I think it's called, from England, you see those big wind, wind turbines that are all over there in, in that region. That's actually all produced, and, and, and it was, a, it was a, uh, a project that was done, done by Muslim. So I think uh, Wolfgang said it perfectly yesterday. When it comes to climate, we do need activists, because it's very, very important. But we shouldn't mix it with journalism because there are two different things and they will have two different goals that they need to uh, address my